All right, guys, welcome back. Make your way to your seats. Put down your tray of pizza rolls. It's time to get this game going once more. It seems that the sound proofing issue has been rectified. Yep, uh, everything seems to be good to go. Paul versus Jay Dong will continue. It could be our final game of the day. It could also be our second last game of the day. Uh, it seems like a lot of you guys did enjoy our little downtime yeah. before this. So <laughs> thanks for all the responses that we had. It, it was funny. We had a good laugh off the screen. It, it's just a good feeling when everyone's having fun and enjoying mm -hmm. themselves. And I, I feel like, uh, not to get too far ahead of myself, but that's been this weekend. We've had a, a great time. Axitos dusting off the dust of... Uh, not even a retirement, just his inactivity. He's been busy being a college student, coming out and, and casting his heart out. Great games right and left. I know that Destiny and Sheth had fun on the B stream. Uh, and we also actually, speaking of the B stream, we have an update. Yep. Bomber did actually end up taking that three to one as we get into this. So Bomber takes third place. Violet takes fourth place, which he can be proud of. And uh, I know that you were just looking at the prize, but I know second place is 3,500. Do you know what third and fourth was? 1,500. Or good. maybe like 1,800 and. 1,200 then. Something like but that. It's exactly 150 WCS points. This is really important. Yeah. We've mentioned pretty much everything that we have to mention to you guys, guys. But above all, there are also WCS points on the line for uh, all four of these players. Both Violet and Bomber, despite finishing third and fourth, will get the same amount of points, 150. But uh, the loser of the final gets 200 points, I believe. And the yeah. winner of this tournament walks away with 300 WCS points. And as we've seen last year, 300 WCS points can easily Huge. make the difference Huge. between going to BlizzCon or not going to BlizzCon. And going to BlizzCon alone, already represents a lot of money. So yeah, with that out of the way, I guess we can truly focus on this TVZ right now. Yeah, one certainly does die, but we've seen this dance before. Before we break away entirely, I want to say, I think it was uh, Nanny One Revival that were tied at the end of that, but it was, it was like them and then 50 points that separated them or whatever. Some small margin from the other spots as well. Oh, wow. That is not something Good that we deal. have seen in this day already. That's not something that's supposed <laughs> to happen either. What? I don't, it's just funny. Yeah, I mean, it's we haven't seen that, so the crowd kind of blew up about it. <laughs> no, but the crowd is right. The crowd is picking the crowd up on the important right. things. Kevin, <laughs> second Reaper shows up, so it's going to still be the you know the three Reaper opening, but it's just trimmed down to two right now. Almost getting a drone there, but they'll be chased back as well. They need to be careful. Can't lose a second Reaper. That would be catastrophic. Uh, speed is coming it, up on yeah, Christian. Yeah, I, I always get weirded out, but he knows ex he knows it to the second. Do you see how weird that is? Like, uh, two seconds later, he's gone. He knows. I mean, but, like, if you play Protoss, don't you scout the gas and then count out when, you know, you know, it takes oh, I don't like... use numbers as a Protoss player. I try to aim for more laser beams than my opponent. <laughs> if I can, I just have more laser beams. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> oh, uh, Starport, second barracks up there. Uh, he always likes to tuck it in towards the top. Holt, uh, habitual man, if you will. Um, it's interesting. I, You know, actually, in, in retrospect, what did cutting out that second barracks do for him? It wasn't the faster third CC, like I was, again, kind of arrogantly assuming. What was it? I, what was the difference? In the last game? Yeah. It was that he had way more Hellions, though. OK, like, you're right. He went up to like 10, Yeah, I guess. He okay. had way more Hellions than in the previous games. Uh, there's going to be a much quicker Roach farm for Jadong this game as well. This is actually one of the more popular maps where we often yeah. see that 1-1 one, one Roach timing. I'm not going to say that we will see it, but you know, if Jadong is going to do it once in this series, there's a very realistic possibility yeah. That is going to be on this map. And uh, this third base will be scouted out. But again, because of that second barracks, it seems, he's not really emphasizing on the number of Hellions that it would take to challenge that. We have a Marauder coming out, uh, Viking. And we can presume that Medivac should be coming out after that. Uh, an additional barracks being added here, by the way, and still no engineering base. Now, that's something to keep your eye on, because he has added them late. But I don't know. This Maybe is it is this late. This is a little more similar to the uh, merry-go-round build. OK. Very similar, actually, I guess. Roaches have been shown, and now we can see that these are defensive roaches. It's drones behind this. It's it's a lair. Evolution Chambers just finished up, I believe. I love this scan from Pult. And with that scan, he does not see additional roaches. He does not see a quivering uh, roach warren. So he probably has the intel to say, nope, this is not a, a really fast push. It's one that may develop as time goes on, but for right now, I'm OK. Interesting, though. This time we see plus one missile attacks being researched by Jadon, while yeah. all the other maps, it were always the melee upgrades. So this drop by Paul, it, once again, is going to be two medevacs produced of a starport without yeah. an add-on, a few marauders and a few marines. This can actually really slow whatever Jadon wants to do down very badly. Yes. Like, Jadon wants to produce a ridiculous amount of roaches from this point on and just hammer 
hammer down this build, but it, or hammer down this wall. But if he's never able to leave his base because Bolt starts dropping him, that's gonna really slow down slash completely neglect See that this effect, push. Kevin. I really like this very subtle thing that we're looking at at Jadon's natural. It's just one spore crawler right now, but I like that he's immediately recognizing a a weakness in his build, but b. Uh, map positioning. I mean, look, he has the back of his natural exposed to the Terran player. That's exactly where the medevacs are coming. That spore crawler is going to be enough to chop down one of those medevacs if it hangs around yep. too long. It's a really nice move. But I think that as soon as, soon as Bolt realizing what he's playing against, he's not even going to try to drop like here. He might fly to the main, but above all, he wants to keep these roaches at bay. The roach count is climbing. We have nine roaches, nine more on the way, so 18 roaches are out on the map. Bolt actually uh -oh. is going to stim in, but he also still has these Hellions yeah, over here. Hellions from the high ground. Throw. They're going to hit from the high ground. The drop at the natural is unfortunately not doing as much damage. He's fighting against Zerglings. But the Hellions getting some pretty good work done there. To be honest, though, Kevin, it's kind of interesting. If they would have gone to the low ground, these might all be dead, these drones. From the high ground, actually, I feel like Jadong. It yep. could have been worse, is the point I'm trying yeah, to make. Yeah, Jadong didn't really have anything there. Like, if he leaves a couple of roaches behind them, like, doing it from the high ground. This better to just swing around, but it's something that Bolt couldn't have possibly known. That Roach count is still going up. Jadon on 65 drones right now, but he's also producing crazy amount of Roaches. And Bolt is going to have to babysit these units, Jeff, because he doesn't really yeah. have a whole lot of units. I still think Bolt is doing good, though, because I feel that he knows what is going on. How many bunks do we have? Just one. He needs to put these Marauders you in. He what? needs to pull SCVs. It's interesting. He's not building bunkers. He's only building Marauders off of one barracks. He's actually adding another reactor. Oh, yeah. I don't know if he identified this somehow. It, it's ah. really weird, but if he did, then his response is super strange. It should be fine now with these two Vitamins. One Vitamine well, actually gets picked off, but still, there are quite a few Marauders. This is not fine, Kevin. Wow. Why is not fine at all? That's a lot of 1-1 one, one roaches is pouring in right there. The bio force of Bolt is dwindling. SCVs being pulled. Damage is guaranteed right now. Medivac's coming over, but here comes more Jadong. Jadong wants to be your Texas champion at Lone Star Clash 3. He's fighting tooth and nail for it right now. Pole trying to hold on. Supplies showing an 80 supply advance to the Zerg player. 20 roaches in production behind this. Pole seems to be dislodged for now. The Widowmine on its cooldown, but it's about ready to fire another volley. But I think the amount of SCVs that have died is just critical. Yeah, so many SCVs going down, and still so many roaches are in the natural as well. I'm so surprised that he didn't even try to repair that bunker. He saw all these roaches, uh. and he just let the bunker die. And the big story here is that, yes, the Bioforce at the top of the ramp seems to be enough. Well, no. enough with an asterisk. Uh, enough yeah. to maybe survive right now. But behind that, all these SCVs are dying. He did not evacuate any. He comes down the ramp. There's more Zerg here. Jadong is pushing to the top here. Widowmine's not enough. He's knocking on the door. The depot gets knocked down as well. Just one more. Jadong pushes into the production line. Pulse is on his last leg. Jadong might have just done it. It seems like Jadong just has a few too many roaches. He has been phenomenal throughout the entire weekend. Pull throws down an armory. Now that's like the last <laughs> thing that <laughs> someone would ever throw down. What is he doing? There are like 10 roaches in your base. It seems like Paul will clean this up. Yeah, no, that's remarkable. That's a really impressive. But, you know, I, don't, I hate to say it, but at what cost? At what cost? Oh, the faster question for the century. The natural's getting picked up. It's set to flame. Pult, as you said, does clean up inside the main. There's a couple of Widow Mines coming back down on the cooldown. Jadong has a really robust economy behind this, but he is planning for plan B. His fire is put down as well as the Bailey Nets. Widow Mine hits a you know, nice shot there against some of the Medivacs. I gotta be honest though, this is one of those things where like there's nowhere else to go. Pult doesn't want to just GG. But he's super dead. He's uh, very dead. He's still losing SCVs. Only 11 SCVs remaining. But he will stabilize. The it armory is. did complete, <laughs> yes. though, which now gives him access to 2-2. To 2-2. Two, two. To two, two. All right, there goes the Musan. All right, so we have 67 drones against oh, six what? SCVs. Oh, Jesus. But yeah, we do have it. triple orbital. So that means that Terran oh. is basically ahead. Just, yeah, exactly. Just kidding. Three, yeah. Orbitals <laughs> are good, but not that good. I right? hate Rotterdam. <laughs> uh, a lot of Zerkling is kind of pooling up outside. The, the upgrades have shifted to melee. You'll see that it's two carapace with just one melee. Nine deals oh. coming out. Now, usually, Mutalist switches from here are actually quite weak. They're behind in upgrades. They're, their number's not super high. But where I don't know that that matters is that Pulp's super weak across the board. I mean, I know he finished an armory, but outside of that, like, <laughs> he doesn't have much else. You really like this armory. I love it. Joke. It was a brilliant choice. Yeah, these units will get surrounded. Can even pick them up? Medivac, Medivac being dies. sniped as well. Widowmine's not getting his shots off. He pulled is looking for either. And down 100 supply. Jadong is coming close to the inevitable GG. Picks off the natural pull is coming to terms with the eventuality. GG is calling.
Jadong is your Lone Star Clash 3 champion. Absolutely fantastic performance by Jadong throughout these entire two days. <laughs> and there we do have it, a very charismatic smile by Jadong. He's pleased with that performance, and he should be. That was a really cool finals. And that is, you know, this is a, this is a big deal. These are really great opponents. Uh, and that's one more monkey off his back. I mean, you know, people will be very quick to be like, well, that's not a super premier tournament. That was not a WCS grand final. That was not uh, a dream hack or an ESL event. But at Lone Star, we had 16 phenomenal players, not a weak link in that in that chain. Uh, to, uh, almost, yeah, anyways, chain. Uh, and he overcame the odds and he wins in the finals, something that he's faltered on in the past. He's gotten to these finals, but he's hit that brick wall. This guy pulled? 4 owed him a year ago yep. in quick fashion. And here we are, Jadong almost 4 owed him. Pult makes a battle of it, but in the end, Jadong does get that big victory for himself. Yeah, Jadong had to wait quite a while for, uh, or to be able to, to get his revenge on Paul, but eventually he did do it, and he is going to walk away with $7,500. So that's actually a really good price as well. Yeah. It's not like, you know, ah, he attended this local tournament in the US and he won it. $7,500, and you know that people gave it all they got. And yes. we had some of the, you know, the most accomplished StarCraft 2 players here. We had Paul, we had Bomber, but of course, we had Jadong as well. So Anna, take it away. Here's your winner! People are screaming really loud. They seem to really like you. I know they're, they're all going to want your attention, so I, uh, I just happened to have my uh, Blizzard Jadong lucky trading card. So uh, before they all get to you, can I have your autograph? Sorry, suckas, I cut you in line. Awesome. So, Jadong, you are first place. <laughs> you are first place at Lone Star Clash 3. How do you feel? Uh, very happy. And before WCS, I lost the uh, port 0 4. So, today, finally, I beat him. So I'm very happy. They are very happy too. Do you want to say anything to them? Uh, thank you for here, cheer for me. And uh, yes, be be beautiful life. Well, it is my pleasure to present to you the Lone Star Clash Trophy. The Lone Ranger of Lone Star Clash 3, E.G. Jadong! Thank you, Jadong. And thank you so much to everyone who made this event possible. <laughs> he can bring it back with him later. Thank you so much to everyone at UT and everyone at Well Played. If you see anyone in those red shirts or those black shirts, please tell them thank you. There are a lot of volunteers that donated their time to make this possible, and they've done a great job. Also, of course, thank you to all of our sponsors. You saw them up there. Blizzard, Twitch, Alienware, Aver Media, Gamer University, Gaming, uh, Gaming Academy, and BenQ. Please uh, tweet them, show them some love, let them know you appreciate it. Thank you guys for joining me. I really appreciate it as well. I'm Anna Prosser Robinson. I hope I get to see you again soon. And I believe we have another word from our dashing, handsome, and wonderful husbandy casters. Uh, well, I, 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 feel, I would feel remiss if we didn't have the opportunity to also thank everybody. This has been an absolutely amazing tournament. Same sentiments. It's just so cool uh, what a bunch of passionate, intelligent college students can come together and do. I think uh, this branch of TESPA, the, the uh, University of Texas group, they have something to be really proud of. And, and uh, thank you so much for including us. Thank you to the donors, the sponsors, uh, and thank you to all of you guys for filling up those seats and, and for watching from home as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you. Guys, go home, be safe, study, uh, drink milk, and get lots of exercise. Also, get outside. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.